We are counting down to SpaceX's first crewed mission of the year. After years of dominance, so far, SpaceX is about to face new competitors. It's a moment when this first mission of 2024 will showcase its influence, and that's what we'll be discussing in today's episode of Alpha Tech, Crew 8 Mission. Before mentioning Dragon and the upcoming Crew 8 mission, let's celebrate together with SpaceX and Elon Musk for a new record set by Falcon 9 upon the successful completion of the Starlink launch on February 25th. Due to continued design improvements, this Falcon 9 carried its highest ever payload of 17 and a half tons of useful load to a useful orbit, Elon Musk tweeted on X. SpaceX said the payload included one additional Starlink satellite from previous East Coast missions. SpaceX said the development was partly due to performance increases on Falcon 9, thanks to continued design improvements. Indeed, this marks the largest deployment of V2 mini satellites by Falcon 9 to date, exceeding the payload of the previous mission by over 100 kilograms. Accompanying this achievement is the company's 18th mission of 2024 and the 13th launch and landing of this particular enhanced booster. Eight out of the 12 flights conducted by the company so far have been Starlink missions. To continue its streak of milestones in 2024, SpaceX is gearing up for a significant missions scheduled on March 1st, known as the Crew 8 mission. When compared to other missions by SpaceX, Dragon launches are relatively infrequent. The Crew 8 mission will signify SpaceX's inaugural crew launch of the year and its third journey to the ISS in 2024. Preceding the launch, SpaceX and NASA collaborated on critical matters to ensure the certification of the Crew Dragon endeavor for its fifth launch. This involved conducting a flight readiness review, or FRR, alongside other necessary reviews to authorize the vehicle for flight. At a media briefing after the flight readiness review, NASA and SpaceX officials said they were working on a few minor technical issues with the Crew Dragon spacecraft and Falcon 9 rocket. That includes confirming composite panels on the vehicle are properly fastened and studying paint discolorations seen on the Crew 7 Crew Dragon currently at the station that could change the vehicle's thermal properties on re-entry said Steve Stitch, NASA Commercial Crew Program Manager. Those open items, he said, do not appear to be major issues. I suspect we'll close these out Tuesday or Wednesday. One previous issue that appears to be resolved involves straps in the main parachutes called energy modulators, intended to regulate the load on the parachutes as they're extracted from the capsule. Some of those straps did not pull apart as designed on a Cargo Dragon mission, CRS-29, that returned in December. Those straps worked as intended on the most recent Crew Dragon flight, the AX-3 private astronaut mission that splashed down on February 9th. We didn't see any of the energy modulator problems that we've seen on previous flights, said Bill Gerstenmeyer, SpaceX's vice president of build and flight reliability. This flight will be the fifth for this Crew Dragon spacecraft named Endeavour, which flew the first crewed SpaceX mission, Demo-2, in 2020. NASA has currently certified Crew Dragon for five flights, but is working with SpaceX to extend that certification to as many as 15 flights. We're in the middle of doing that work, Stitch said, evaluating various vehicle components. Some are actually approved for 15 flights. Some we're still in the middle of working on. He said that work might result in extending the lifetime of Crew Dragon, as well as its cargo variant, to some intermediate value between 5 and 15 flights, at least initially. I would like to get out to 7 to 10 flights per Dragon, but we'll see where we go. SpaceX is also completing a fifth Crew Dragon spacecraft. Gersten Meyer said that the vehicle would be ready this fall, with it notionally planned to fly the Crew-10 mission in 2025. Whenever NASA wants to go ahead and use that vehicle, it'll be available sometime in the fourth quarter of this year. Well, it must be said that SpaceX's Crew Dragon is truly remarkable. It serves as a key, safety-ready vehicle always prepared to serve customers without disrupting mission schedules. If someone were to say that this mission had still been delayed, that wouldn't be incorrect, but the reason doesn't stem from any technical fault of SpaceX. Rather, it's due to the launch site, Kennedy Space Center Launch Pad 39A, being the only place where Intuitive Machine's recent moon landing missions could take off. This is further constrained by the need for the same pad to support the previous Falcon Heavy launch. Aside from being a reliable vehicle, it also acts as a lifesaver for astronauts. Specifically, the Crew-8 missions will carry NASA astronauts Matthew Dominic, Michael Barrett, and Jeanette Epps, along with Roscosmos cosmonaut Alexander Grabankin to the space station. In there, NASA astronaut Janet Epps has had to get comfy in three different spacecraft seats. But while she said she'd fit in any one of them, it's the SpaceX Crew Dragon Endeavor set to lift off this week that ended up being the one that was just right. Chosen as one of nine NASA astronaut candidates in 2009, all of her classmates have flown to space. Epps has previously been assigned to both a Soyuz mission and a Boeing CST-100 Starliner mission to the ISS. 
but after our reassignment took her off the Soyuz trip. At one point, Epps was assigned to be on what would have been Starliner's first rotational crew mission, Starliner 1, which was originally targeting flight in 2021, but now won't fly until at least 2025. Epps was finally shifted to the SpaceX Crew-8 mission. I guess any launch is a great launch, it got a mission, so even though you're the last, it doesn't matter. You get that launch, you get the mission, and you go, she said after arriving at KSC with her crewmates. You know, they always save the best for last. Now, nearly 15 years later, she's set to finally get to space atop a SpaceX Falcon 9 from KSC's Launch Pad 39A. I'm very grateful for this flight, Epps said. I've trained for Soyuz, I've trained for Boeing, I've trained for a lot of vehicles, but I'm honored to fly with this crew on the Dragon Endeavor. Epps will be one of three space rookies flying along with fellow NASA astronaut and mission commander Matthew Dominic and Roscosmos cosmonaut and mission specialist Alexander Grabenkin. The pilot for the mission, NASA's Michael Barrett, is the only frequent flyer having been to the ISS twice before, first on Soyuz in 2009 and then on the final flight of Space Shuttle Discovery in 2011. Dominic, who was chosen as an astronaut candidate in 2017, is also among the last of his class to fly to space. The four members of Crew-8 will bring to 50 the number of humans who have flown on its fleet of four Crew Dragon spacecraft, with only one repeat of flyer among the 50. After the Crew-8 launch, NASA will see the Crew-7 return to Earth and prepare for yet another test flight of Boeing Starliner. To be honest, if it weren't for this announcement, I might have forgotten that this spacecraft even existed. But finally, Boeing CST-100 Starliner vehicle, which was scheduled to conduct its long-delayed first crewed flight this spring. Stitch seems quite confident, stating, We've worked through a number of issues that delayed the launch from last summer and closed those out, he said. That included a final parachute test in early January to confirm changes in the design intended to increase its strength. That test was a success, he said, with no additional parachute tests planned before the CFT launch. Workers have also replaced flammable tape in the Starliner spacecraft and resolved in-flight anomalies from the OFT-2 uncrewed test flight in May 2022. Right now, things are looking good for, towards the end of April, launching Starliner. That launch will fit into a busy schedule of missions to the ISS. The Crew-7 Crew Dragon mission is scheduled to undock no earlier than March 8th, he said. That'll free up a docking port for a cargo Dragon mission, CRS-30, scheduled to launch in mid-March. It'll remain on the station for about a month, and after undocking, the Crew-8 Crew Dragon will move from the forward to the Zenith docking port to allow Starliner to dock at the forward port. Some future launch date adjustments for even Starliner might happen just because of this busy time frame, Stitch said. It's uncertain whether Starliner can meet its deadline this time, but hopefully, there will be a miracle of success for it. If it gets delayed again, it'll surely be a significant humiliation for Boeing, as well as a disappointment for the space enthusiast community. That's all for today's episode. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time.